Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how to set the timer value in TCP. Now, you want when you want to set the timer value in TCP, you want to make sure that the timer is not too short because that will lead to a lot of premature timeouts and unnecessary retransmissions. In contrast, if you set the timer value to be too large, it's going to react so very slowly to segment loss. So the timer is a very critical aspect of TCP and it has to be set intelligently. To do that, what we do is we try to estimate the round trip time or the RTT. Now the issue with estimating RTT is that the RTT varies because packets when they're sent over the internet, they take different amounts of time to go from the source to the destination, and the acknowledgement to come back. So what do we do? And the more important question is, how do we estimate the RTT? To do this, what we do is we make me collect measurements over the internet which we call a sample RTT. So it's a measured time from which the segment is transmitted until an acknowledgement is received. Now we ignore retransmissions during this calculation of the sample RTT. Now the sample RTT will vary and what we want is we want the estimation of this RTT to be smoother because we don't want our timer value to, be keep, to keep jumping up and down. So what we do is we collect several measurements and take the average of these measurements and, not, and, do, and don't make the timer rely solely on the current sample RTT. So let's see how this is done. So the way we estimate the RTT is according to this formula. This formula is called uh, the exponential weighted moving average. What we do is we have a current estimate of the RTT, which is the estimated RTT, and we weight it with one minus alpha, where alpha is a value which varies between zero and one. And then we also so weight the current sample with this value of alpha. So what we're doing is whenever a new sample comes in, we are updating this estimate based on our current estimate. And we are also taking the current sample measurement into account. So the current estimate is weighted with one minus alpha and the sample is weighted with alpha. So this is how we estimate the RTT. So as you see, this RTT is going to change, the estimation of this RTT is going to change over time. And what we have here in this figure is the RTT on the y-axis and time along the x-axis. Now these blue points are the actual samples of these RTT. And the pink line is the estimated RTT. As you can see that the estimated RTT varies smoothly and it captures the trend. And it does not react too sharply to changes in the sample RTT. Now, now that we have estimated the RTT, we want to know how we can use this RT RTT to actually set the timer value. To do this, what we do is we take the estimated RTT and then we calculate the deviation in the RTT. So dev RTT is the deviation in the RTT and what it captures is how the sample RTT varies over time. Now, once again, this is measurement oriented. So the, the deviation of this RTT will also vary over time. And the equation that is used for estimating this deviation in the RTT is given on the slide, which is one minus beta, the current deviation of this RTT. And then what you do is you take the difference between the sample RTT and the estimated RTT. And you take the absolute value of this. And you weight this with this value beta. So once again, this is also an exponential weighted moving average where you're taking your current estimate of the deviation into account and you're weighting this by a factor y minus beta and you're taking the difference between your current sample and the estimated RTT and you're weighting this by this factor beta. Now the typical value of beta that we use in our real life or in these real world measurements is 0 0.25. Now once you've calculated this estimated RTT, and this dev RTT, which is the deviation, the timer value is set by this formula, which is estimated RTT plus four times this dev RTT. Now, you, why do you think that we use this value four and we multiply dev RTT with four? So we have done this empirically. Empirically, lots of measurements have been conducted and it has been found that this particular formula works well in practice. So for estimating the timeout, what you do is you take the estimated RTT plus four times the deviation or the dev RTT. Now this dev RTT or this four times this dev RTT accounts for the safety margin such that you don't have frequent timeouts. 
with this i'll conclude this video thank you for watching